The legacy of the 20th century is really the world recognizing that it is one. At the start of the 1900s, countries were a lot more separated, both politically and otherwise. And because of many of the events that had happened during that century, humans were a lot more connected. If you just look at systems of communication and the internet, people can communicate with each other instantaneously from all over the world. Now the challenge is how can we spiritually be connected? And how can we catch up our spiritual selves to our material selves? The message of Baha'u'llah, I think, what makes it so transformative is that it speaks in this day for the very first time of the true unity of the entire human race. In this period of transformation that we're in right now, the world is going from a state of infancy to a state of maturity. As certain systems and institutions may start to disintegrate, other systems are being simultaneously created that represent forces of integration. Baha'is are striving every day in this process of integration to be conscious of the fact that everyone is a member of the human family and that takes precedence over every other piece of our identity. We have national identities and racial identities in the world today, but our truest identity is that we're all human. A spiritual identity, which calls for a complete reorganization of human relationships that the world has never seen before. So powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. Baha'u'llah, whose name means the glory of God, was born in Persia in 1817 and was renowned for his generosity, compassion, keen intelligence, and excellent character. In the middle of the 19th century, Baha'u'llah was summoned by God to reveal a new message to humanity, a new revelation from God, thereby ushering an era of universal peace. Baha'u'llah's teachings form the basis of the Baha'i faith, and it's a message of infinite hope for all of humanity. Baha'u'llah has brought this revelation that we are all members of one human family and we're working towards this idea of universal peace. And that's really the foundation for the work that we're doing. We don't have a faith that stands apart and is meant just for Baha'is. Rather, our whole purpose is to serve humanity. And so we're constantly reaching out in a spirit of collaboration with others. The Baha'i community offers various activities to unite the community, such as devotional gatherings for people of all different backgrounds to come together and pray, classes for children that focus on their spiritual education, groups for junior youth to be of service to their community, and then a series of courses for people who are 15 and up to have spiritual conversations and really reflect on our lives and to build the capacity to be of service. From these activities stem different social action projects that would be appropriate for that community. What the Baha'is are trying to do right now is to just really create community life in the places where we live. That involves just getting people together in different spaces. And one of those spaces is uh, the devotional gathering. We have devotionals about twice a month. A lot of the people, they never had a gathering like when the Baha'is have devotion. Different peoples from a different background and different religions. We believe in opening our homes and our hearts. This is the place where Baha'is and their friends are coming together to join in prayer from which we realign our purposes and we gain that unseen energy that sustains all the different things we do in a community. The Spiritual Education of Children program seeks to try to help young children between six and 11 develop those qualities that they inherently possess through prayer, 
through memorizing quotes, and then they learn stories, they sing songs. To be able to have the children class here in my community is really important. Most of the kids in my children class came from an immigrant family. So this children class is like a place where the kids can have fun together, learn from each other, and to inspire each other. The moment that really touched my heart is that every weekend I see them coming and being really excited to learn about anything and to do like arts and crafts and just like playing with each other. I'm seeing changes from the children. They will be motivated, they will be like singing a lot, they'll be praying and then they will be really friendly to each other and then know how to treat each other. Junior Youth Spiritual Empowerment Program is for those ages 11 to 14. They go through a series of stories about different junior youth across the world and examine different spiritual concepts such as hope versus despair, the idea of justice, and then they examine their own talents, their own interests, and think what does the community need and how can we play a role in bettering our communities. It's a conduit for them to do service in their communities to further their education After a few minutes. and a way to socialize in a healthy environment is facilitated by an animator who like helps draw forth the voices of the junior youth. It's their group. I realized sort of once I kind of just let them do their thing, they'll take it from there. In order to offer these services, Baha'is and their friends are equipping themselves with these capacities to be able to offer programs like the Spiritual Education of Children, the Junior Youth Spiritual Empowerment Program. And the way that we're doing this is through the Study Circle Program. The Study Circle is a group of people who are coming together and studying spiritual material, kind of discussing about them and investigating the implications of those things on their lives. What does it mean in my day-to-day -day life that let deeds, not words, be my adorning? And how do I apply those beautiful ideals in the way that I interact with people and in the different services that I render in my community? Once we've been in a neighborhood working with the children and junior youth of that community. From these activities, of course, stem different social action projects that would be appropriate for that community. These youth, they could identify the problems. So we're pulling together resources to accomplish, at first, small service projects, trash pickups, visiting the elders, and they've gradually become more complex. After four years of doing service projects, it became a, a part of their nature to serve others. This is the changeless faith of God, eternal in the past, eternal in the future. Baha'u'llah teaches that there is one God and that all the religions are part of one divinely revealed process by which God makes his will and purpose known to humanity. Although we may differ in our concepts of God's nature, although we may pray in different languages and call God by different names, we are speaking about that same transcendent being. This process of uniting humankind has begun and there's no turning back. It's going to be long, it's going to take a lot of work, and there's going to be many challenges along the way, but we'll also grow both individually and also collectively. The idea that everybody has a part to play no matter how large or small is really important because it speaks to a consciousness that we are all connected to the same purpose. And so that means on a daily basis, you're reflecting on, am I working towards the oneness of humanity? Am I seeing in the people around me, my brother, my sister, 
Am I reflecting on the teachings and writings of Baha'u'llah? If all of us are doing that, individually, our efforts become collective and change actually happens. We can build a better world together, but it's gonna take every single person seeing themselves as part of this collective whole and seeing what difference they can make.